entrepreneurs of the world. Leading Entrepreneurs of the World features entrepreneurs, founders, and business leaders presenting on cutting edge topics and the latest in industry developments. Our goal is to provide the global business and entrepreneurial communities with a window into the minds of those who are shaping the future of our world. Today, we're very pleased to welcome leading entrepreneur, Sam Miller. Sam is the founder and CEO of Proteus Motion. At Proteus Motion, Sam and his team are pioneering the future of training and physical rehabilitation through the development of technology and equipment that combine patented hardware and software into resistance training systems that are capable of measuring strength in three dimensions, meaning just like we move in real life. Sam, it is a great pleasure to have you here with us today to hear more about the future of fitness. Thank you and welcome to Leading Entrepreneurs of the World. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's my, uh, my pleasure um, and uh, I'm excited to uh, talk on a, a topic that uh, we're very passionate about at Proteus Motion. Um, I, uh, I, I'm going to introduce a little bit about uh, who I am, who Proteus Motion is, what we do, um, and how we see the, uh, you know, the, the commercial and at-home fitness space evolving, um, as well as kind of where we fit in. It's a, it's a very interesting time. If I'm, I'm sure everyone who's uh, watching or listening uh, has uh, either heard or said that phrase uh, many times in the last 18 to 24 months. Uh, and it, it uh, certainly is the case in the, in the fitness space for sure. So exciting times indeed. Um, so again, I'm, I'm Sam Miller. I'm the founder and CEO of Proteus Motion. I am uh, currently in our headquarters uh, in, in New York City. Uh, we just opened a new office in Williamsburg. Uh, we're a team of uh, roughly 20 uh, I I employees, uh, but full team of about 40 uh, on, uh, in, in the New York area and in, uh, in Southern California uh, of, uh, you know, engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, software developers, uh, sales and marketing, um, human performance, uh, and, uh, and, and a, uh, a variety of other disciplines. Uh, our, our technology spans uh, a, a number of those uh, discipline, disciplines in a pretty unique way. Um, I started Proteus uh, in, in 2015 um, I was inspired actually by a mechanical uh, prototype that my father had started to develop and explore as a concept at uh, MIT in the early 90s. Um, and he kind of went off and developed, you know, this concept a little bit further uh, in the basement of my uh, childhood home in uh, outside of Boston. Uh, he had a, a vision for uh, a new type of exercise uh, equipment that uh, allows you to train in three dimensions, but really re eliminated the inertia uh, that you experience when training with traditional equipment, like a free weight or a cable machine or a Nautilus or you know, whatever that may be. Um, if you think about like you're swinging a dumbbell around uh, it's a lot easier to move the dumbbell at the, at the beginning, but really at the end when you've got the inertia that's actually carrying you forward to finish a repetition for a movement and you actually lose the benefit from a muscle activation standpoint um, of, uh, of, uh, of training because you're just swinging this weight. Uh, so his idea was to create something that was inertialist, but also allowed you to train in three dimensions and perform any conceivable exercise. So he had developed this concept for a mechanical system. He, you know, he was able to achieve incredibly uh, resistance from magnets uh, in two planes, two of the three planes. And then he kind of abandoned the project and, you know, market timing wasn't right. He was a, just an engineer and was just exploring this concept. So fast forward, you know, 25 years, uh, I saw this opportunity. I was a, a former athlete, many injuries, but also struggled with training, tracking progress. And um, uh, I started with that 
original prototype and then I actually developed three dimensional resistance, which I'll talk about in a second, what that is, why it's valuable, um, how it fits into the, the space um, and solves problems in the space. Uh, we patented that, we've got multiple patents. Um, and most importantly, we discovered or unlocked this completely new method and data set for evaluating human performance, which is something we've also patented. Um, so let me actually just share a very short video, uh, which will give you a, vi a visual of what our product is. Thanks for watching that. So <clears throat> this is, uh, we're, we're doing something that's very unique. It's also one of those things that uh, I hate to say it, but it, it's, uh, it's totally true is you have to really feel this and see this in person to like, to fully understand this experience. Um, our thesis here is, uh, I'm gonna share another uh, part of a deck here. Our, our, our thesis here is that um, this kind of explosion in uh, uh, fitness technology uh, that we've seen in recent years has largely been kind of around just digitizing existing pieces of equipment, right? So put a sensor on a bike, put you know a screen on a cable machine and mount it to a wall. Um, you know, and, and, and kind of apply that to any piece of exercise equipment that, that's out there. Now, it's a brilliant idea. It's a brilliant concept uh, in digitizing this. And we love the explosion of technology in this space. Um, what we've done, though, is that we, we've basically identified that future state, there's going to be, hu there are huge limitations to the type of content and the software services that existing fitness equipment when digitized can provide. What I mean by that is if you think about, uh, you know, cable machine or rowing machine or bike or whatever it is, there's no differentiation in what they can measure. Um, so from a content standpoint, you know, the differentiation is, you know, what types of instructor instructors you have or what type of programming you have, which is can be very, very engaging to up to a certain point. And for context, I have a Peloton, you know, I love it. Uh, I it's a it's a, you know, it's a great workout in cycling, classic cycling, and it's very engaging. Um, and uh, but I, I there's a there's a kind of a uh, a limitation to how and when I use any of the information that I get from it. It's more uh, an experience uh, that is really engaging, it's fun, and it definitely keeps me coming back. Um, if you think about strength training equipment though, you know, whether it be a, you know, traditional piece of equipment or a free weight or, you know, a Nautilus, it, the 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 last 40 years has been marked by this idea about isolating specific muscles right so i'm going to just isolate my pecs i'm going to isolate my biceps i'm going to you know isolate my hamstrings uh, and train those specific muscles uh so there's some there's some there's some voids here and opportunities that we see 
And one of them is around, okay, well, if you're just tr getting resistance in like, you know, one specific plane, that's the extent of what you can measure. And one of the issues with that though, is if we move in three-dimensional space, whether you're an athlete or a non-athlete, regular fitness consumer, um, we, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're moving in 3D. And one of the things that's really important to understand is the difference between strength and power. So strength is, you know, something that is absolutely critical foundational foundation uh, to not just movement quality, but, you know, musculoskeletal health. Um, but power is the ability to generate velocity against a force, which is basically how do you use that strength to do whatever it is you're trying to do. And so one of the easiest examples is, you know, if you're a, um, a golfer, uh, how do you, you, you built this foundation of strength, right? So how do you translate that to being able to hit a drive 350 yards? Um, you have to be able to uh, generate velocity uh, against the force of, and, you know, inertia of the club uh, and be able to manipulate your body and control your body. It's more than biomechanics. It's about engaging your muscles in a way um, to, to produce this really efficient movement pattern. Um, so not only can traditional exercise equipment not measure strength, all, can also not measure power in more than one or two planes. So this is something that like kind of seems obvious, but it's not really known. And the reason is because there's just hasn't been anything that's actually allowed you to either train in truly in three dimensions, or, but really measure in three dimensions. So we've seen this huge gap here and this huge opportunity. And, and what, so what we've done is created the Proteus system. This is something with multiple patents on and This is a combination of a hardware and a software product. We started from the hardware side. We said, you know, uh, we want to create this completely new type of training modality and this different type of exercise equipment that solves a specific problem uh, on the training side. And in doing so, unlock this completely new uh, and really pioneer this new uh, analytics world. Uh, and that's what we've done with Proteus. So what, what, what Proteus essentially is, is, um, uh, you know, it's, it's the invention of a completely new modality of resistance training. It, we, it's clinically proven to be two times more effective than a free weight or a cable machine. Uh, it produces virtually zero muscle soreness, unlike a free weight or cable machine. So it can be used every single day. Um, the median time for a full body workout uh, is about eight minutes, no longer than 12 minutes because it's very, very intense. Uh, at even really light loads, really low impact on the joints. And this capability, this, this modality, this mode of exercise um, or, or of resistance training has unlocked the first ever way to measure strength and power in three dimensions. And we've rolled that into a software product that um, is becoming the world's first ever diagnostic strength coach. Um, we have a massive head start on, you know, we're the only ones in the world that can measure power and strength in three dimensions. Uh, when we first developed that capability, it was very exciting, but then we, you know, hit, hit the kind of barrier of, okay, wait, uh, this is exciting, but we don't know what this means because there's no context. So we, and we, so we think about this, the pair a parallel being, you know, an X-ray or an MRI machine, right? When, when, um, you know, MRI was first invented and you get these incredible images um, of, you know, the, the in, inside of your body, what you cannot see with your own eyes. Um, it, it, it wasn't immediately apparent to the, not just the inventors, but the, uh, the early adopters of it, how to use it uh, and what the images mean. So similarly, the first couple of years of, uh, of um, uh, with Proteus, we had a, um, you know, similar challenge ahead of us, which is basically, okay, well, we need to actually like capture a lot of this information and start to associate it to not just other technology and tools, but like real life performance. And so we really started with athletes in particular, competitive athletes specifically. Um, 
to start to gather this data and capture this and understand it. So um, uh, I'm just gonna give a, a couple more, uh, a little bit more of a glimpse of what the technology is. Then I'm gonna talk about the, the marketplace and what we do, what we're actually doing, how we're building our business and how this fits in and what's happening in this space. So I'm just gonna jump right in. So this is something that it allows for, you saw in the video, full range of motion in three dimensions. It's totally user controlled. There's this very exciting software platform. You can do any conceivable exercise you can imagine with this patent resistance. Um, uh, the 3D resistance experience is something that is really important to feel in person. Um, so let me just, actually, let me get to one of these slides here. Um, yeah, let's get right here and just, I'm gonna talk about the space a little bit. So our business has been, we just we just developed in the last 14 months developing a completely uh, like a mass manufacturable version of Proteus, which is what you're seeing here on the screen, which is uh, the total redesign, new patents, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the same, uh, or sorry, improved functionality from the 1.0 Proteus. We produced about 25 of the 1.0 Proteuses, um, uh, which we kind of slow rolled into the marketplace in the first couple of years, uh, which are kind of prototypes in a sense, but we were you know, selling them at the time. Um, we developed this mass manufacturable version that's significantly lower costs, low retail price, uh, and um, you know, improvements across the board, uh, you know, uh, and it's and it's mass manufacturable. What we've done is our business has really focused initially on businesses that provide services to competitive athletes. So we've been really focused on uh, as a B two B play right now, but longer term that's expanding into B two B to C, and then eventually B two C. Our technology, we are, we think about like the competitive athlete space, like the tip of the. A pyramid of this entire TAM. The entire TAM for us, total uh, addressable market, is um, is think about it at a minimum is anywhere that a treadmill exists. So anywhere where human performance is valued. Uh, I know this looks like a totally new specialized piece of equipment, but it will only be a matter of time before this this is total. This is ubiquitous. And Proteus is just known. This is what you do. This is a type of training modality. Um, that has been introduced in the market and it's, and it's absolutely everywhere in its current and future forms. Um, we have actually, we have end users that represent every single age uh, and demographic that you can think of from uh, some of the best athletes in the world and most well-known athletes in the world to, uh, across almost every sport to you know, um, non-athletes who are eight years old to 80 years old and everywhere in between. And that also includes every single stage of health because it's totally safe to use. Now we can't attack all those markets at once. So we really focus on this competitive athlete space first. We sell our hardware system and then there is an ongoing software subscription for the analytics. We've rolled those analytics into, this is our flagship software product, which is uh, a full body power report. So you get on Proteus and in three minutes, you do 17 exercises and you receive uh, a, let's see if I have a visual of this here. Um, it looks like I don't. Um, it, you receive this um, a, a report that shows you strengths, weaknesses, comparisons to your peers, et cetera. Um, and it's, it's turning into a true diagnostic that's fully automated, almost like a fitness vending machine in a sense. So it's been really interesting to see in the last 18 months as this, the, the world has changed so much. Um, you know, it, it's forced so much change, especially in fitness. It's made people, you know, quickly adopt new habits, rethink what they value. Some of those things are temporary. Others are going to be permanent. Um, and I kind of think about fitness as, you know, commercial fitness in a, in a way, this might be a stretch, but I kind of think about it like restaurants, right? Where anyone can cook at home, you know, but if you want professional service and an experience, right? You like, a, a, you know, a, a really memorable experience, you go out. Um, I, and I think about fitness in this way where, you know, right now, um, because of these forced changes due to the pandemic, uh, there will be a lot of people that never go back to a gym. I think, I think that's, that, that's truth. Um, I think it's also fundamentally, untrue and, in, and inaccurate to think that uh, 
this is the death of the commercial gym, whether it be big box or otherwise. I think it's just going to be an adaptation. Um, I, I part of, and a part of the one of the drivers for that is that's going to be interesting to see is if people don't go back to the office, they're that's going to have an impact on going to the gym, right? So if you, you, a lot of people go to the gym because they're they're I'm making some generalizations here, but they're they're already out, right? Or you're in your routine. But if you're not already out, you may not necessarily make a special trip to the gym, or at least not as frequently, right? So um, it's great to see that the pandemic has proved, uh, if, if anything, has, has uh, increased not just the awareness, the understanding, the importance of fitness uh, as it relates to not just physical, but mental health, which is fantastic, right? Um, it would be a very unfortunate thing if, uh, if gyms had been you know, partially closed during this pandemic time and there wasn't an explosion in at-home fitness, that would be a, a, a very sad <laughs> moment in, in human history. Um, and, and that's absolutely not the case. If anything, this has been made people more aware, more hungry for information uh, and, and understanding the importance of their, their health and wellness. Um, so uh, my take is that there's gonna be, the, the future is gonna be this hybrid model where I think that the, the, the at-home market play is gonna um, continue to be strong. Uh, it not only does it have legs, it has a ton of momentum and some of the products going into that space are fantastic. They're really fantastic. Um, I, I, I do think that, you know, five or 10 years from now, there's gonna be, unless there's a total change or something fundamentally uh, new that's been introduced in the market, there's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be a very crowded space uh, with very little differentiation in the product. And, and that's one of the things that we're kind of paving the way for starting in the commercial space and then within the commercial space, starting with the athletes. Um, so to me, it's like, you know, it, unless there's a real reason to go back to commercial gyms, why would you, right? Um, uh, and that, that's sort of somewhat of a rhetorical question because that answer is different for everyone. Some people are like, you know, I, I will never go back. I, um, I personally was hungry to go back. And what I think is, uh, what I, I found this balance for me is this hybrid, right? At home and, and, uh, and, and at commercial uh, facility. But let's not forget that one of the main one of the main drivers of people going to a gym is actually for social reasons. Um, uh, many people use personal trainers because they actually develop a, a relationship with their personal trainer and their best friends. Um, and maybe it's for the experiences, music, lights, the environment. Uh, in a lot of cases, it's for the technology, right? Access tools and equipments that you can't get at home. Variety, variety, variety. Variety is insanely important. So like it is going to be a really bad thing for overall. It would be a really bad thing for kind of overall um, human health if everyone just did cycling and a cable machine, right? That's not, that's not good. Um, you, you need that variety, you need that variation, you need those tools, but we cannot expect everyone you know, we'll have to see how this plays out with real estate and people, you know, uh, trends of moving away from cities to seek more space. I don't think everyone's going to have a room in their house that's a, uh, um, a home gym, right? There's a lot of that, but I, I, I don't think that's uh, something that we should expect or a, anticipate here. Um, so one of the interesting things that we've found is that, uh, and, and one of the benefits of, of uh, what's worked out really well for us, especially um, over the last 18 months, is that we've been so focused on competitive athletes. Now, let's talk about competitive athletes for a second, because um, what we've discovered is that they've got very, very different behaviors and needs uh, than your general fitness consumer, right? They value in person coaching, specialized instruction and the best technology tools out there. And they're incentivized to make those investments in their own health. Um, they, you know, personally having, you know, uh, uh, having known uh, many, many professional athletes personally, I can uh, say for sure that not many of them, if any of them are using a Peloton are really satisfied with, and this is no knock to Peloton because I love it, um, but, but it, that's, 
that doesn't solve their problems, that doesn't fulfill their needs. It's just one tool potentially in this toolbox that they can use, um, um, but it, it's, it's not what they're seeking, right? Uh, so what we found is that the, being a B2B business right now, uh, the pandemic has had very little impact on what we classify as like sports performance and sports medicine businesses. Um, and I think that's driven by, uh, that's driven by this need of the competitive athletes. And when I say competitive athletes, I'm saying all ages, all sports, this could be, a, you know, 55 year old, uh, golfer. Uh, and I'm not talking about pro or amateur. I'm, you know, if you're playing a sport or even a non-sport, we call everyone an athlete, but, um, anyone that is like very active, especially focused on, uh, on movement or performing a task is an athlete in my mind. Um, the businesses that we serve have been doing very, very well, uh, during this pandemic. And that's driven by, as I said, um, this, uh, the, the different behaviors of, of the clients, uh, of these, of these facilities. So it's an interesting distinction to make, and we're seeing no slowdown on that front. If anything, we're seeing, uh, you know, more of an influx in these businesses and, and businesses knowing, Hey, I need to actually make I need to do some more preparation, whether it be more staff or broaden technology tools and services and offerings to uh, market my business even more because I'm trying to grow. So we're seeing this unprecedented, you know, um, pursuit, I think, by a lot of these businesses of, hey, I want to, I think I should open a second location, a third location. I think in the next three years, I'm going to be planning to franchise my business out. Um, uh, which is really, really exciting to see. And so we are, you know, uh, we have phenomenal relationships with, with our clients. It's one of the things that we take a lot of pride in. Um, we are, uh, we're going to be around for a long time, even though we're, we're, you know, in my mind, just starting out, we've probably accomplished maybe 1%, 1% to 2% of our total capabilities from technology standpoint, software and hardware. Um, this is just a starting point as we introduce this product and this technology to the market. And what we're finding is that uh, a lot of these businesses are looking for these tools to differentiate, improve, uh, and improve their the services and offerings that they have. Um, part of that is uh, driven by, you know, again, these are some hot takes that I'm doing here because I. I we're, we're going to have to see how this plays out. And, we'll, you know, in, in a year or two from now, we'll have 2020 hindsight. We don't have that right now. So we're, there's some guessing going on, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how, what portion of the, you know, trainers that were out of work during the pandemic and were forced to create online businesses or join some of the digital platforms out there that couldn't be, you know, couldn't go into the, the gym or lost their client base and try to go virtual what portion of them are actually going to go back and or be able to sustain um, a, a business digitally? Um, we personally know of many, this is kind of somewhat anecdotal, we know a, a lot of those trainers who have said, I, I am actually going to choose a different career path because I don't know how, I'm unsure about the, the future here. I don't think that's so much the case in the, the elite sports training market because there's been such a demand for those services. Um, but it's an interesting thing to see. So there's another need for some of these businesses to fill some of the personnel gaps with technology tools that can streamline or automate their businesses without adding the overhead of staffing, right? So how do I make my staff, my team more efficient? How do I make my business more efficient? How do I make it more attractive? And that's one of the things that Proteus has started to fit into in a really exciting way. So a lot, some of the businesses are working with are marketing Proteus as this tool to get a, an assessment, right? A couple minutes, get an assessment, and that's going to, that, that assessment is used to make training decisions, right? So I know your strengths, weaknesses. I know, do you need to work with heavy resistance, light resistance, everything in between? Um, and you know, because, it, which is really, really important because one of the things we're finding with elite athletes is that there's a lot of overtraining that's done with foundational strength. A lot of these 
these athletes that we work with, they're already really, really strong. They don't need to be working on that. They need to be working on power, right? Generating velocity. Um, and, and uh, you know, you have to, you have to continue to train strength, but you don't need to do it that frequently. It can actually be detrimental. Uh, and then if you're in a detraining phase where you stop training, power is the first thing you lose. You, you actually hold on to strength for a, pr a pretty long time. Um, so what's really interesting to see is, is the, our technology, especially our software product being used to attract clients to these businesses um, that we provide our services to and use that as a, automated way to kind of create a training program or make recommendations uh, for them. And that is often a gateway for discovering how to use Proteus um, uh, as a training tool, right? So I had mentioned at the beginning that Proteus is used as a training tool with this 3D resistance, not just measurement, it's also training. Uh, it's, you know, zero soreness, uh, very low impact on the joints, two times more muscle stimulation than a free weight and cable machine. And what we're finding is that it's creating some dramatic improvements to movement quality and movement efficiency in a way that you simply, it's physically impossible to get from a medicine ball or a free weight or, you know, cable machine or what have you. Um, so this is all about movement optimization, movement training, um, rather than isolated muscles, right? So this new concept is, has been really, really exciting for a lot of these businesses. The product in the field has been unbelievably sticky. We've got, you know, our, I think on average, our uh, client base does, you know, 10 to 30 sessions on Proteus per day, if not more. We've got some facilities where they've actually gotten two or three machines because there's a, literally a line to use it and it's used all day long. The, the product is used by a single person from anywhere between two minutes to 12 minutes. Um, so super, super efficient um, uh, and a great, uh, uh, a great training and a measurement tool. So uh, what we're trying to do in this space is like, you know, again, I've got my own preferences. I've got my own beliefs. Um, and I also have to recognize that, um, I may not be representative of the entire population and I don't need to be. Um, but what we do need to understand is like, what is, what are the psychological motivations behind fitness consumers? Convenience, it turns out, has proven to be um, really motivating and really powerful, right? So at home, on demand, give it to me on my phone, you know, give me a trainer. That's great stuff, right? That's great stuff. Um, but we're finding with a lot of these individuals, even in, with some of the, the gen pop um, consumers that we have, and I'll give you an anecdote. We've got a, a population of, um, you know, a couple dozen or so um, uh, 40 to 65 year old uh, female non-athletes, just general consumers that are using Proteus at a, one of our great sites in Southern New Jersey, um, are using Proteus as uh, um, for 15 minute sessions. They're paying $25 for a 15 minute session, $25 to the business, uh, two to three times a week. And they gave up their gym membership. And they started this phrase called, do you Proteus, right? So it's really appealing to even the gen, the gen pop consumers um, and some of those folks, instead of going to the gym, they have, they go to use Proteus, whether it's for some of them are doing assessments and training. That's, most of them are doing assessments and then they're training two to three times a week. They'll do an assessment maybe every two weeks, two to four weeks. And then they'll, you know, at home, the, the on the other days, they'll use, um, you know, one of their uh, fitness apps, right. Um, virtual coaching, you know, what have you. So, um, there's there's going to be this period, I think, where uh, there's um, this kind of hybrid exploration of people going into a place and then doing some, you know, having access to some great content and tools at home or remotely, but having an anchor at a facility. And what we're developing is this network, as you get more systems out there, this network of Proteus machines where, you know, you'll be able to pull up the Proteus app, 
search for the nearest Proteus near you, book an appointment, five to 15 minutes, go right in there, fully automated self-service, um, get your assessment. And let's say you're working with a, um, on a digital training platform you know, with a trainer across the country, you send them the report and they're actually able to use that to create a program because they can't see you in person, right? And this is measuring things that you literally, it's physically impossible to get from anything else. Um, so there's some really, really exciting uh, opportunities here um, that we are, uh, we are, you know, kind of all in on taking a leadership position from a commercial fitness standpoint in driving this change. I think that's been accelerated and helped in a lot of ways by the disruption in the last 18 months, uh, despite its you know, overall challenges. Um, and uh, you know, as an entrepreneur, uh, I get most excited about the future, right? I love the idea of not just thinking about the future, but knowing that the things that we're doing today can alter and change that. And that's exactly what we've started to do. It's exactly what we've started to see. And um, we're really excited and really confident that Proteus is gonna play a key role um, in the transformation of this space um, and fitting into this void um, that exists in both training and measurement that can bridge a lot of the gaps and not just the understanding of human performance, but the business models that exist for the customers uh, in the commercial fitness space who also are either competing with or also offering uh, uh, their you know, portions of their service or product digitally. So it's a really, really exciting time. Um, you should, uh, uh, I, I recommend checking us out. Uh, I would, you know, uh, we're redoing our website right now, proteusmotion.com will be a couple of months before that's fully updated, but the, um, the Instagram is, is probably one of the best uh, uh, platforms to, uh, to check out. It's just at Proteus Motion. Um, there's some really exciting stuff there. A lot of the features of some of the elite athletes we're working with, a lot of the use cases, the applications, which are really, you know, infinite. Um, and, um, um, you know, if, if, if you're interested in learning more, uh, either uh, drop by our Williamsburg office in Brooklyn uh, or, uh, or uh, send us an email. I really appreciate it. Thanks everyone for your time.